All right. Hi. Um, again, it's Friday and it's very summery time. Um, so only the very, very determined summer school uh, students are here, but that's that's great. Uh, we're going to have a better uh, discussion for sure. Um, it's a pleasure uh, to, to introduce RA Collective. Um, and this is one of, of uh, this very radical group of individual artists. I love the way they present it rooted in Belfast, not based, but rooted. Um, I'm admitting people uh, along, along the way. Um, and they join together to create collaborate actions in response to social political issues affecting Northern Ireland. Um, array studios um, and project space in the city center acts as a base for the collective. However, the participant artists are not limited to studio holders. Um, Anna also wants to say how pleased she is that, that you're, you're joining us. Um, the summer school really looks at um, a diversity of, of work. Um, and believe me, your, uh, your work uh, has been a reference in the conversations that we have had uh, with uni tutors, um, as well as amongst us in order to put the brief together, in order to understand you know, this condition of new togetherness. And I think um, a practice like yours, if I can use the word practice, is only in, uh, inspiring uh, to us. So I'm, I'm going to pass the floor to you and, and thank you again for joining us. Congratulations for the Turner Prize. Um, can't wait to see uh, what you're going to show us. Thank you. Thanks a million, Sophie, for the great introduction. And um, yeah, we're delighted that there has been lots of interest from also, uh, you know, uh, parallel practitioners such as like uh, people coming from uh, architecture studies um, and other and other further fields uh, in our work. Uh, so yeah, it's really great, and um, and we always really enjoy to uh, give talks or presentation. Um, uh, to people that are not uh, uh, just artists, <laughs> but they're doing also other stuff. So um, it's great to have you and thank you so much for inviting me. And um, yeah, uh, the um, uh, today will be quite relaxed presentation, I suppose. Um, so the idea is just like gives you a bit of a glimpse of uh, um, the context where we work, uh, how we work, uh, uh, and then finally, I will be I will be talking a bit about our uh, last uh, big project, which of course was the, the Turner Prize. Um, so yeah, um, I'm also gonna leave uh, uh, yeah a bit of time at the end because we have we have quite a lot of time anyway. Uh, for questions, and I know that's uh, that's the most unliked part of, <laughs> of a presentation where people have to ask questions. Uh, but please don't be shy. Um, and also, uh, you know, if you want to share uh, work that you're doing at the moment, uh, and uh, or or things that might link somehow with what I'm going to present, uh, uh, please please share that with the other. Uh, as Sophie was saying, uh, the group is quite small, uh, so um, we can make the most of it, I suppose. <laughs> um, so yeah, feel free to put questions in the chat, uh, as well as uh, uh, ask question uh, in first person at the end. And uh, if you would like to turn on your camera, uh, that's obviously very welcome. But I also understand that uh, you might be in places where, uh, yeah, you can't turn on your camera or your connection is not uh, uh, super stable. So don't worry if you can turn off on your camera. Uh, so um, I'm going to share um, a screen now, the right screen, yes. Good, <laughs> great. Uh, you should be able to see my screen, correct? Yes, yes all good. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, perfect. <laughs> um, okay, so my name is Alessia Carnielli. Um, I'm uh, not originally from Belfast, uh, I'm Italian, um, and I've been based in Belfast for around uh, seven seven years yeah seven years um 
So I'm at the moment, I'm uh, like a visual artist and I'm also a PhD researcher. Uh, so I thought I might add some, some bits from my research in this presentation. Um, so as said, I'm gonna start uh, giving you a bit of context on, uh, um, on Belfast and especially the uh, artist run uh, culture in Belfast, which is very rich. Uh, and um, and yeah, very special uh, um, compared to to other places in in Ireland or UK, um, and so that so then you can understand the, where where Ray uh, how Ray started <laughs> following this long tradition, I suppose. Um, so yeah. Uh, <clears throat> So the visual art history uh, in Belfast is the actual the artist-led uh, history, uh, the history artist-led initiatives. Uh, so it kind of goes uh, uh, opposite to um, other places where maybe uh, longer established big institution or museum are being based for for a lot of time. Um, in the 70s, uh, following the example of activist and grassroots community organizer. Um, artists have come together to fulfill what was perceived a cultural vacuum, uh, especially because the city was already vexed by the ongoing conflict. Uh, and in the 78, uh, the first uh, artist-led organization was established and it was called uh, ARE, uh, that stands for uh, Art and Research Exchange. And you can see like uh, a press release uh, uh, just there uh, on the presentation. And uh, that was initiated as a result of a workshop that was based in Northern Ireland uh, by the Free International University, uh, which was a project by, um, you probably know, uh, the artist jo Joseph Boyce and Eric Ball. And, um, and so that's how uh, IRE begins. And it was based in the 22nd Lombard Street, which is um, a street in the in the very center of Belfast. And he was developing his activity as a cross-disciplinary center. Uh, so we'll have both screen printing workshop, design studio, photographic dar uh, darkroom, and artist studios. So it was polyfunctional uh, space. And that's something that uh, it's, very, it's very common in Belfast, especially at the beginning. Some spaces were not just artist space, uh, were cross-disciplinary and there was, there was design involved, uh, there was music involved uh, and et cetera. Um, and so the space was used also for seminars, for conferences and uh, for band rehearsals. And, uh, and because it was in the city center, is like a place that everybody could access. So whatever area of Belfast where you live in, the center was perceived as a sort of neutral zone. Uh, even though we're still at the time that the center was closed. So it was just, uh, sorry, it was closed at night. So it was just accessible during the day. People will go there to work. There will be uh, uh, bag searches to, to access the center and the same to go back. So uh, it was a bit different than how you perceive, uh, how you experience Belfast today and how I'm perceiving it, for example. Um, so, um, so yeah, this space uh, became the headquarters of um, a group of artists that called themselves Artist Collective of Northern Ireland, so pretty <laughs> descriptive name, and um, and also Circa uh, that you might have heard before. Um, it's it's now um, all Ireland contemporary art magazine, uh, but it was initiated in Belfast uh, in in eighty one, and uh, uh, yeah, they have an incredible archive on their website. Uh, of all the old issues and stuff. So if you want to have a look, uh, we'll uh, suggest to, if you're interested in uh, um, mostly um, Irish uh, art scene, uh, but also beyond that. And um, yeah, just one year later than the Art and Research Exchange establishment, uh, the first MFA uh, in the island of Ireland was open uh, in Belfast, in us University. And that was a, a key moment because that attracts loads of students beyond Belfast, for, so both from Ireland and UK. And um, so it was a um, MA with practice, so people, uh, students, sorry, um, have access to uh, a studio. 
Um, and that's very important because it retained lots of talent and lots of people that then after the master were willing to do something and to, to keep staying in Belfast. And uh, another, oh, sorry, um, another key um, organization uh, that is probably less, less known is the Belfast Anarchist Collective. Um, that uh, opened a space called Just Book uh, in uh, 1978 in Whitehaver Street. And I'm giving the name of the street because just to say it's all, it's all in the center, it's all pretty much five minutes from each other. Uh, so you can tell how these things kind of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, people were like uh, going through both spaces and using the space quite often. And um, yeah, so after just books, so there was like a proper collective that began in 84. Um, and uh, again, in Donegal, Donegal Lane, so pretty much in the same area. And they also provided a vegetarian vegan cafe. And uh, there was a uh, practice uh, for bands and office, uh, office base, uh, a venue and a screen print workshop. Um, so again, a, a space that has like uh, uh, many functions. And uh, in Just Books, uh, another project began to, uh, to emerge uh, and it was uh, uh, the collective, the feminist like collective called Women's News. Uh, so there were a group of women uh, that started producing this magazine. Uh, you can see uh, the first, uh, I'm actually sorry, issue number two on the slide. And uh, again, um, it was quite a mixed group uh, coming from different uh, uh, communities and backgrounds. Uh, but the idea was to list it, all the events that uh, were uh, for women um, that were happening in Belfast. So from uh, marches, from meetings, uh, uh, but also lots of stuff to do with like uh, uh, art and you know maybe exhibition or um, something that was for uh, for we well mostly for women only but uh, dedicated to women let's say and um, so the same group uh, um, advertised the first uh, uh, International Women's Day in Belfast that was happening around that time uh, reclaimed the night marches uh, and um, as well as uh, women aid uh, services uh, so it was very important and uh, they often collaborated with with the, uh, <clears throat> the Belfast Anarchist Collective, just because they were using also their space uh, to, print, uh, to print their magazine. And the first issue, especially, you can see them, um, they are very uh, DIY and there's you know, a mix of like drawings, uh, handwritten stuff and uh, typed uh, um, articles. And everybody was able to submit their, their articles. Uh, so it was very, uh, it has a very like collective spirit and there was pretty much no signature. You don't know who is the author of what. So yeah, <laughs> um, in very, in that style, I suppose. And um, yeah, and also in the same time, well, actually one year uh, earlier in 83, Belfast Expose was funded and the Belfast Expose is now a photography gallery. Uh, but at the time, it was like a collective of young lo local photographer that was trying to challenge the media representation of Belfast and especially the experience of conflict. So there were young graduates uh, that were just, uh, um, yeah, uh, in the street to focus on photographic documentation and uh, of what, what was happening, but from, from their perspective, I suppose. Um, so uh, very important. And they've also an extensive archive as well. And um, yeah, just continuing on the, on the artist collectives, uh, I thought it was interesting to show you that as well. Um, so um, this is two materials that are connected with um, a group called the Northern Irish Women As Artist Group. And uh, uh, as, the, as their name uh, pretty well explained, <laughs> they were a group of women artists based in Northern Ireland. And uh, uh, they came together uh, because they, um, they realized that there was very few opportunities for, for women artists at the time. Um, the art, uh, uh, the kind of like higher uh, art scene was very much uh, white male dominated. And, uh, and so they were trying to uh, make opportunities for yourself, for themselves, but also to, uh, to find uh, spaces and projects that will uh, 
make uh, um, like a feminist informed art to flourish uh, instead of <laughs> denigrating into some sort of um, yeah um, uh, B um, B level art or something. <laughs> Um, so yeah, one of their first uh, project was called Identities, and you can see uh, the the poster there. And it was in November '87, so you know we're pretty much in the late '80s. Uh, and uh, you can see below it was organized, uh, of course, uh, in the Art and Research Exchange in Belfast. And um, for Identities, they uh, they asked lots of artists uh, from not just Northern Ireland, but also uh, other places to, to join. So it was like a, just a sort of small exhibition slash festival that was like a program of performance and, and stuff like that. So, um, so it was extended beyond the borders, both in Ireland and with the Irish diaspora. And um, and then yeah, just beside there is like another uh, another event was a seminar uh, for women artists, and it was like an all Ireland wide. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. Um, few photos of that, and then that's like a, an amazing drawing that I've been uh, uh, borrowing from an artist based in Belfast called Dan Shipside, and uh, that's his uh, um, map of uh, artist spaces in Belfast and especially the artist run and not artist run <laughs> as you can see there. So it's a sort of like spiral of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, names uh, and things that maybe they're not running anymore, uh, but then something else comes up. So um, that's at the start of the nineties, there were so many collectives that, and uh, artist led spaces that started in Belfast and notably, um, Lauren Street Workshop, uh, still active, uh, Paragon Studio, which is still active, uh, Platform Arts uh, and Catalyst Arts, uh, which here is at the center of, uh, of this diagram, um, which uh, was funded in 93 and um, is still active. And, uh, and also Magpie Studios in 94, that then will uh, rename Array Studios. Woo. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Catalyst Arts uh, works uh, uh, with a model of um, uh, of a two year directorship. So it's run by a group of uh, uh, voluntary uh, artists. Uh, it's mostly artist led, and um, yeah, since the nineties, there have been more than one hundred uh, uh, co directors. And many of which are now working uh, uh, in international organization or as uh, well established artists. Uh, so that's very important because even in array now, like three of us or actually four of us uh, did uh, uh, were involved in Catalyst previously. Uh, so there is really like an heritage of, um, I don't know, uh, artist led uh, um, working, I suppose. And um, this idea that uh, we're working a non-hierarchical structure, so we're all uh, um, at the same level, pretty much, uh, which uh, which can be quite rare um, in the arts and you know beyond the arts as well. Um, so, oh, sorry. Um, that's a few photos of the old uh, um, catalyst. And uh, there was a project where uh, some time boxes has been buried uh, behind the floor and then they've been taken out <laughs> uh, 10 years later, uh, quite nice. And uh, here we are. Um, so um, that's, that's the right. <laughs> uh, we are on the second floor uh, as the big uh, uh, pink arrow are uh, describing. And uh, we're in King Street. Uh, which is again um, in the city center. Um, our neighborhood, our uh, yeah immediate neighbor was full of artist uh, spaces. Uh, not anymore, unfortunately. Um, there has been quite a big uh, redevelopment plan uh, within the center, uh, starting from the cathedral quarter, which is quite the northern part of the center. I will talk about a bit about that. Before, uh, after, I think as architect, you might be interested in that. <laughs> and uh, and that's the kind of like west side of the center. So it was quite run down for a while. So perfect for, uh, you know, cheap rents and uh, uh, 
not so well equipped spaces, but still, uh, you know, okay for artists. Um, but uh, yeah, now unfortunately, lots of spaces had to move uh, because the buildings has been sold and uh, they're probably going to be completely redeveloped. And that include Catalyst that was just based around the corner, uh, platform, another space, and uh, Queen Street Studio. Uh, so we are the last ones. <laughs> um, and hopefully, uh, yeah, we might be able to stay another year, but even our building, uh, you can see it's like a it's kind of like a small warehouse building, uh, will be probably completely refurbished. So uh, we'll have to we'll have to find another uh, another base soon. And uh, um, yeah, so I'm um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about uh, how the collective began, uh, because as uh, as uh, Sophie was saying in the introduction, uh, well, there is there is two things actually. There is the Ar array studios and the array collective, uh, which are not exactly the same thing. <laughs> um, so array studio, as I say, was has been based well based in that building since 94 and it was just you know a group of um, uh, recent graduate artists uh, wanted a cheap studio in Belfast and uh, um, you know the group obviously changes uh, Jane changed uh, within the years um, so I, I joined the studio um, kind of when I was finishing my time in Catalyst Arts so in 2017 um, along with a friend of mine and there was, you know, other group of practitioners there, uh, all very interesting, all doing very nice stuff. It's a small space. We have like around seven, six, sorry, six studios. Uh, so it's quite intimate. And um, that was the time, uh, well, around 2016, uh, 2017, it was the time that in Belfast there was a lot of uh, protests and uh, uh, rallies going on. So I don't know, uh, like if you know that much about uh, recent uh, referendums or changing legislations happening in uh, in the in the Ireland of Ireland. But um, I'm just gonna quickly <laughs> quickly uh, uh, refresh your memory if you don't know about it. Um, and forgive me if you're already very aware of everything. Um, so there has been two keys referendum in the Republic of Ireland um, in the last uh, in the last few years. So the first one was the marriage equality in 2015, which allowed uh, marriage between people of the same sex. And uh, uh, there was also the repeal of the Eighth Amendment uh, in 2018. And uh, this amendment uh, gave uh, um, equal rights to the uh, war, like, uh, well, gave uh, rights to the unborn child. So it meant that abortion was legal, uh, even in uh, uh, extreme clinic clinical cases. So within uh, the repeal of the Eighth Amendment, uh, now uh, reproductive uh, health service and abortion service are now legal uh, in the south of Ireland. Um, but in the north, uh, these, uh, these two things were still uh, not allowed uh, by the legislation. So for example, women had to travel uh, to England uh, most of the time to seek for um, abortion service. Um, and so there was a lot going on uh, in terms of protesting and in terms of uh, lobbying for change, uh, especially after the repeal of the eight in the South. So uh, obviously activists uh, have, have been working for, uh, for like <laughs> forever <laughs> uh, to achieve uh, uh, to achieve this, uh, but there was really like a special momentum after after the um, the legalization of abortion in the south of Ireland, uh, because it really felt that it was the right moment uh, to uh, to make progress as well in in the north. So um, sorry, the long it was is to say that uh, it was a pretty special moment, and there was loads going on. So uh, because our space is in the city center. And because it's so handy to, you know, quickly make a poster or a t-shirt or a placard and then get down to the march. 
uh, we kind of open up the space uh, to, you know, our friends or, you know, immediate circle and um, to make uh, to make stuff in the studio and then get down to the to the marches. And I suppose, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of us have been like, you know, very, very much directly affected by these legislations. And it was quite intimidating to, uh, you know, to have to to protest literally every week for fundamental rights. And um, so I suppose it was so good to be together and doing that within a group and, uh, and also have a bit of fun with it. Um, so that's how we began quite, you know, informally just to be a group and, uh, and do stuff together. And uh, one of our studio member, um, Emma Campbell, is directly involved with Aliens for Choice. Which it's like an um, uh, advocacy group for um, reproductive health care in, uh, in the North. And so we often maybe, you know, run workshop for them so people can just like make their own, uh, make their own placard or poster and then get down to the marches. Uh, so that's an example there. And, um, or this one as well. So we made this like airfare tags. Uh, there were 14 of them, so that was the average number of uh, women that had to travel uh, weekly to seek for um, reproductive health care service in uh, in UK uh, from the north. Um, so yeah, you can see a bit of the studio and a bit of the kind of like communal area there. So it's you know it's quite a small space, but uh, very handy. And uh, that's another <laughs> another one. And uh, uh, we did this for marriage equality. And uh, uh, there was a bakery in Belfast that kind of refused to make a cake for um, for a gay couple that was getting married. Um, and so we just made like uh, sad muffins that, um, you know, the, the, sorry, the bakery eventually closed because kind of no one wa wanted to get their coffee <laughs> uh, or the cakes anymore. So um yeah uh and um this is another project we did uh, um with uh, um many artists from belfast so not just us and uh, it was uh, in solidarity with um, a campaign called save cq uh, save cathedral quarter that was run uh, by um local act uh, architects and activists and uh, uh, the campaign wanted to um, um, wanted the city council to review a plan that was going ahead uh, regards the redevelopment of this area, uh, which is in the northern part of the center. Uh, the cathedral quarter has always been the kind of like more artistic uh, quarter of Belfast. The loads of spaces that I named at the start of the. I have the set of dock were based in that area, uh, but it has been uh, it has been loads of buildings has been bought by private investors, and so they're line empty, and they're waiting to be you know mostly demolished and uh, redeveloped, um, and so Safe Secure was trying to uh, you know uh, obviously uh, the the area needs to be um, revalued. Uh, but uh, there is the scope to like keep loads of spaces uh, and use them as uh, cultural spaces instead of turning everything into um, hotels and Airbnb, the usual. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we invite loads of artists to uh, to make kind of uh, um, temporary intervention within the area, um, and that's uh, one of them. And. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, um, that's one of the first, uh, let's say, um, work that we did uh, within a gallery space, I suppose, uh, <laughs> which was a bit weird, uh, just because, you know, we're like, at, at this point, we were a group of individuals and uh, quite, you know, the same group of people. Uh, but we never thought of ourselves as a as a collective, really. Um, but we were invited to um, to be part of this project um, organized by Jerwood Arts, um, and uh, the name of the project, well, was an exhibition. It was collaborate, um, 
And so they tried to put together different collectives from all over UK uh, to, you know, to develop a new work. Uh, so we were asked, uh, are you a collective? <laughs> would, you like to, <laughs> would you like to do this? Um, so, uh, so yeah, we, uh, we took part in the project and uh, um, we did kind of different things. Uh, we're trying to work with uh, uh, banners and uh, more like placardy materials, uh, which was something we were quite familiar with. And uh, we also made a series of artist moving image work, um, which were showing some parades, uh, for example, the Pride Parade and uh, another protest mixed with the um, archival footage. And the part in the center that you can see was a sort of a little like resource space. Um, so we ask other people, uh, as often we do, we also ask other people to do lots of, lots of stuff with us. Um, so we try to collect different materials that actually do with the mostly feminist and queer culture um, in the North and, um, and a series of uh, uh, footage and archival footage as well. There is one of us that works for a place called Northern Ireland uh, Digital Film Archive. Uh, so, um, you know, it's like a mix of amateurial video and TV video. Um, so there is lots of stuff there, lots of uh, resources that have been often overlooked uh, that are very interesting to be, you know, uh, adapted in the context of a, of a gallery. Uh, so, yeah, the idea was like, <laughs> try to keep like an historical um context of on our work and then present some of our work um, I don't know if uh, we were all happy with the result <laughs> because it felt quite small and constraining in in uh, yeah uh, in comparison with what what was our our scope um, but of course uh, you know it was limited uh, resources and, and time to develop <laughs> a encyclopedic project about the north of Ireland so <laughs> Um, but it was, I suppose, uh, a good um, a good exercise and a good chance for us to to test our work in another context and to try to speak to an audience that was like an, more like an art audience and and to bring things that were usually made very quickly uh, without thinking too much uh, in yeah in in a white cube basically so uh it was uh, it was really it was really useful um and um, important project i suppose for for us and for uh trying to find ways to collaborate and to work together as well um this was happening meanwhile the show was on so um on the in october 2019 um, there was uh, the abortion was decriminalized in the north as well as uh, um, marriage marriage equality. Uh, so it was an amazing day. And Stormont was uh, um, the parliament has has then been closed for four years because there wasn't an agreement between the two uh, main political parties. So in the absence of the government, these two legislation have passed in Westminster. Um, so, um, so yeah, it was a great day. So it's kind of weird, you know, the parliament is closed. <laughs> You're just protesting in front of it. Um, there's nobody there. Um, and that's just a few images from that day. And, um, and in response to that, uh, we made a street intervention uh, a week after. Um, so we just like a long banner at the North is now, uh, which is a slogan that was that um, was born after the repeal the Eight Amendment in the South. So uh, there was always, you know, this idea of the North is next. Uh, and then finally, when the decriminalization happened, the slogan was um, obviously changing the North is now. Um, which is very awful moment. Um, so not to say that every, everything is resolved um, because there is a huge problem in accessing uh, abortion service both in the South of Ireland and in the North of Ireland. So it's, uh, you know, there is so much to do still, but uh, yeah, at least one step was done. <laughs> um, 
And uh, this is uh, a symposium we organized in, at the end of Jerwood show because we felt, you know, there was loads of laws have changed since we opened the show in September and uh, it was really a nice time to put uh, um, different people together that have been very much involved with the uh, activism and the politics in the north of Ireland and in the island of Ireland. Uh, so we had the pleasure to invite Anne Rossiter uh, which is um, an activist uh, um, that has been working um, basically all her life uh, to fight for women's rights. And she's based in London and she's Irish originally. And then uh, Malakiara uh, is um, representative of Green parties in, the, in Belfast. And we're working for um, Endless Amount of Years. And Electra Lacante is an activist and um, a performance artist. And, uh, and a drag artist. And uh, Una Malali is an incredible journalist. Um, she's uh, based in Dublin, uh, but she has a very good understanding of uh, how North and South uh, of Ireland kind of work together. So it was incredible to have them speaking. And uh, uh, the, um, actually the, um, the talk is still uh, online, if some of you are curious and I can add the link on the chat later. I don't have it with me. I didn't prepare it, sorry. But um, I can send that later if you're interested. Um, and so for the symposium especially, we, we um, put together this little booklet about our uh, house rules. Uh, so what, what we think uh, it should be, if there will ever be like house rules of array, uh, that's what they are. Um, so um, yeah, you can read them there. Um, gag is a um, colloquial dialecty word to say have fun, uh, have the crack uh, and have a laugh type of thing. It's like a bit between fun and laugh. Uh, so it's a sort of cheeky fun, I suppose. Um, and kind of, you know, links up with our idea to incorporate very often uh, humor in um, uh, in our work, uh, which uh, often carries very, you know, serious and traumatic uh, experience. So the use of humor is is a way to, um, yeah, take ownership of it, I suppose. And uh, and there's quite a lot of power in humor as well. Uh, so uh, it's, it's something that we, we're, all, we're all using in, if, in our different ways, I suppose. Um, so, okay, what time is it? Yeah, perfect. So I might show you this short video uh, so you can also hear other people speaking and not just me. <laughs> and uh, um, it's a video that we made uh, um, for while we were making our work for the Turner Prize at the Druids Ball. Uh, and so it's just like a little introduction about Array, about how we work and about uh, what were our idea for um, the, the show in the, in the Turner Prize that of course we made for, for that occasion. So uh, at the time of the video, we were in the making of, uh, of this new work. Um, so here we are. You should be able to hear well in a second. There are 11 artists. We all have individual varying practices, but obviously when we come together, we are a very collective. And that was in the 90s, it first came to be. And then around times of the noughties, then Maybe a little louder. We can read the, the subtitles, but we can't hear the, the voices. Okay. There was a richness of artist -led yes, spaces, perfect. kind of DIY activity and DIY spaces going on at the time. Array expanded and developed quite naturally into a collective due to the political climate at the time, the fact we were all friends out marching for causes that we believed in. And the studio is where six of us have a physical studio space, but the collective is where the group of artists that make things happen. 
we would kind of, if someone had an idea, you would share it with the group and then everyone would come together to make it happen. Then that's when sort of local activist groups would start to approach us and ask us to give them a hand with visuals. But again, like we are very much part of that community. So we're not working for people. It's kind of ourselves as well. And then for about two years, there were kind of, there was a real push for political causes that we felt very strongly about. So the two main ones would have been the abortion law and marriage equality. Yeah, and we didn't really see that as an artistic practice. It was more us out campaigning for our human rights, really. But again, they're all campaigns that were quite personal to us. So we always felt like we were part of the communities that we're working with and for. You know, in Ireland, abortion and queer rights are quite, you know, shrouded in shame and secrecy. So it did feel quite important for us to be out really confidently and unashamedly kind of dressed up in these costumes and having a bit of crack about it. It was quite challenging, that period of just constant protest. Like for a while, we were felt like we were everywhere somewhere. So for a number of those rallies, like we've gone as Mother Ireland to International Wednesday, gone as a set of Sheen the Gigs to Rally for Choice. Um, there was a number of wedding cakes made for marriage equality. I obviously am not from the north of Ireland, but moving over here kind of felt very much that like my rights had been changed. The strongest elements of working in Belfast is this interconnected nature of, uh, of, of the arts community. Everyone's kind of in the same boat, so there's a real sharing. There's, so there's no really kind of hierarchy when it comes to kind of the larger uh, kind of studio groups and smaller studio groups. We're very aware of the fact that like kind of people, activists have been kind of working within the realms of kind of women's rights, LGBTQ rights, the Irish language, uh, mental health for decades before we, we're just in the next part of that story. And I think that you know, a lot of the kind of more mature activists kind of are wanting kind of more young people to kind of take up this and kind of push them forward. We'd all kind of stick together to look after each other, to protest about the stuff that's really important to us um, and important to our kind of friends and community in the North, but also that we have the crack. And that's really, really important. If you think of any of the great social movements, they always needed really strong visuals. They always had artists as as key to kind of that cultural and social change. The reason you interject crack or fun into it is by a way of reaching people and discussing really, really heavy stuff playfully. Yeah, I think it's also important to kind of consider that we're coming from a post-conflict society and the North of Ireland and Ireland in general is like stereotypically almost like not a place where people discuss very difficult things openly so to kind of take it to the street playfully and fun is kind of it's very new it's like it's it's not done traditionally for the turner prize 2021 exhibition we have decided to kind of expand our practice um, that we had previously been working on in other shows where we used folklore and pre-christian characters to represent um different identities in the north of Ireland um, um, but kind of moving away from the typical narratives that you see in the news. We have looked at different um, identities so queer identities and um, expats and we've also looked at characters such as um, the media and the police um, and kind of creative parody characters based on kind of folklore so these characters use materials um, and use kind of imagery from folklore to represent modern day identities. So we created an event called the Druids Ball and we invited friends of ours, artist friends and comrades and allies to create their own characters. The event was based around the centenary of Ireland. So it's a hundred years since the partition of Northern Ireland. In the kind of style of that celebration, that wake, that Irish pub tradition, um, we are going to translate that into the show in Coventry. It's our interpretation of, uh, of you know, the centenary or what Northern Ireland means or doesn't mean. The Turner Prize has been a really good way for Northern Irish practice and activism and maybe changing narratives as well. For us, it's about sustaining this practice and um, sustaining our relationships with other arts organisations, other political organisations in Northern Ireland and the wider island of Ireland. People are able to come here and work in this space. It's a shared space. The door is open. Okay. Um, 
sorry, my computer is like on fire at the moment. Um, yeah, so you have like a little bit of a, of a glimpse of uh, the space where we work and also the other faces as well <laughs> um, of, uh, of Array. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, the Turing Prize nomination came uh, as a bit of a shock, obviously. Uh, first of all, because uh, we were in the middle of lockdown and uh, like literally nothing was happening. And uh, um, obviously it was the first year that uh, um, uh, collectives were nominated. So uh, I think none of us ever, ever thought that that was, was going to be, uh, was going to be the plan for, for the rest of, of the year. Um, so uh, yeah, it was quite, uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, surreal, surreal moment. Uh, but I suppose uh, uh, for us, it was really like a, a chance to showcase, uh, I suppose, uh, the the variety, the richness of uh, arts uh, in in Ireland and uh, uh, in Belfast especially. Um, so the work that we made, uh, um, which is titled Druid's Ball, um, had uh, uh, a lot of collaborators, uh, as you will see uh, while I'm speaking. Um, so I was, uh, as it was mentioned in the video, uh, the first thing that we do, we organize an event uh, in uh, a grassroots uh, um, venue called Black Box. Um, and that was still because it was in the, that time that we didn't know exactly if you were able to go to Coventry actually to install the work or uh, like what uh, what we were able to do in terms of, of travel uh, and stuff. So we thought, okay, we'll organize this event uh, in, uh, in the venue, in the black box. Uh, the, the black box was closed for a an year and a half by, by that time, but then we were able to to use it because we had like a filming crew. So there was like a set number of people that could uh, participate in, uh, in, a, um, in a film event. So something that was filmed. Uh, so hopefully none of us got COVID for that. And uh, uh, just about, um, but so what we did organize was uh, a night, a uh, uh, sort of wake uh, slash uh, ball, just slash celebration. Um, we invite a series of performers and artists uh, to take the stage. So some of us uh, were in a race, some of us weren't. Um, and so uh, again, this shows you uh, the way we work. We often uh, uh, invite and uh, use collaboration as a way to, you know, share shared opportunity with other people as well. Um, and then we have a series of guests, uh, esteemed guests as we call them, uh, which were the people, the audience that were attending the event. Uh, so it didn't really feel, uh, feel as, a, as a filming night, it was more like an event that was also filmed. Uh, so it was very... Um, yeah, uh, there wasn't take one or, or take two. It was it was literally happening as as it was happening, <laughs> um, and so there was a series of uh, um, performances, say spoken word, and um, and singing and playing, uh, and also uh, the old space was uh, was dressed up in in array style. So we had lots of banners and. Uh, uh, each of the table had like a different thematic um, and uh, there was lots, it was like very much a richness of, of elements to uh, to like uh, emerge yourself in. So I guess that was a test as well for what the feeling of the of the installation in, uh, in commentary was going to be. Um, oh, so for example, I kind of worked well uh, within array we all work on different aspect of the of the show but we all you know we all overlooked of what's what's happening uh, so i'm i was kind of more interested in uh, in the banners and the kind of like uh, fabric material uh, aspect and um, so uh, i was looking uh, especially as this uh, image uh, and that's a collection of uh, uh, Gerolary, which was uh, which was an actor, but was also um, 
uh, union activist and he did loads of banner for uh, unions of workers in Dublin. Um, and I really like this setup, this kind of like salon of banners. So, so you can really see a bit of the floor. Um, so uh, I was quite inspired of that. And so we create something similar uh, within the black box. So uh, there was two rooms, like this is the room that is more the bar. And it was a sort of like neutral room where people could go uh, in the breaks between the different uh, gigs, so the different shows that we have on. And uh, we just like cover it in, in banners. Um, some of them were from uh, uh, actual uh, rallies. Uh, and some of them, we just make them uh, uh, brand new just for the events. Um, each of us as well was, uh, was dressed up as, as a character. Um, so we kind of like mix uh, Irish mythologies and mythology within kind of like modern and contemporary. Uh, uh, so, for example, I, I was dressing up as um, pro-choice Queen Maeve. Uh, so Queen Maeve is like a mythological queen in, um, in Irish history. Uh, but uh, I have lots of bits that were connected with the um, I suppose uh, Italian feminism and uh, um, other uh, other um, pro-choice movements um, in more contemporary times, um, and uh, that's a banner uh, that we made for for the ball uh, as well. And that was kind of like the first thing that the guests were seeing when they were coming in the venue. Um, as uh, my colleague Laura mentioned in the video, uh, it was also the century of the um, Northern Irish partition. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's always like a controversial, well, controversial, I suppose, a, a delicate uh, uh, theme uh, within, within the North of Ireland. So uh, we try to like make our own, our own century with our own uh, array twist, I suppose. Um, so, for example, here, uh, um, like Ulster has a red, uh, a bloody red hand as a symbol. Uh, so, um, it's always quite fun to use a sequin uh, foot uh, as an alternative uh, symbol of our Ulster. And um, um, as, yeah, a sort of feminist and queer. Uh, foot of Alster, I suppose. Uh, in Irish as well, uh, you use the, um, the word uh, foot to say that somebody it's, it's, uh, uh, oppre it's the oppressor, so it puts the foot on you. So it's quite nice to then use the foot as uh, your own symbol <laughs> in some way. Um, yeah, so that's just like a glimpse of the uh, live performances uh, of the ball. Uh, so Vasiliki Stanislaki uh, is a dancer and an artist, uh, original from Greece, originally from Greece, but based in Belfast. Uh, so, and um, Greece was also celebrating 200 years of their anniversary, um, well, 200, uh, it's not century, B century, sorry. Um, and there was also, um, you know, a controversy around this like hyper uh, nationalist celebration. So she kind of merged uh, the the two things together. So she was she was wearing like a sort of like Athena uh, helmet, um, and then she was wearing this kind of like fake uh, boobs that they were usually wear. Uh, uh, in the Greek uh, uh, com um, comedy uh, because uh, women were not allowed to perform. So it was like men wearing these like uh, kind of like props. Uh, so she was, she kind of like play around uh, uh, the symbols and the colors and she had like a man, um, a sort of cape that you, you can see here, but at the, the symbol of the red hand of Ulster. So it was great. Uh, Maeve Mir is uh, an incredible singer. Um, and uh, she did like a, yeah, kind of like an embedded movement led and uh, singing performance uh, that was in the video. And then one of the final, uh, well, the final uh, performance was uh, uh, by Rosa Tralee, uh, which is an artist and uh, drag queen based in Belfast. Um, 
and that was her scenic exit <laughs> on the top of a car cover in tin foil and die cooked and cans. So, um, oh, sorry. Um, so once we made uh, the ball event, then we have lots of footage to put together <laughs> for, for a video. And then also uh, we had to create a space within the gallery uh, in Coventry uh, where the Turner Prize was hosted. So we had this idea, this is like, just like very special sketches there. We're just like trying to put the ideas together, but uh, we want to create a, a circle structure that was kind of looking at uh, a more uh, ancient, uh, ancient Ireland uh, Neolithic structure that are usually circular and um, and we want to create a sort of uh, a pub slash shibin I suppose pub without permission uh, inside it but something that was uh, uh, felt really uh, as and uh, felt really the place where you go after after your marches after your rallies uh, and so it's a pub that it's very much uh, you know, queer and feminist friendly, I suppose. And um, and then we have all these materials, all the kind of like banners and uh, um, that we create and we add for, you know, from years. So we thought that would be nice to put them together as a sort of tapestry uh, or canopy and uh, have them as a sort of floating roof of, uh, of our installation. So, um, I suppose it's the um, yeah having to make them in Belfast and then uh, wondering if they will ever held up <laughs> within uh, in Coventry, uh, but they did. So um, see, I was uh, showing some picture um, before, and there was this big like banner. The North is now uh, that was just like abandoned in a in a corner of the studio. Uh, so uh, we took it out uh, and we used it as uh, uh, one part of the canopy. Uh, so that's just like uh, a space upstairs. Uh, um, it wasn't really our studio, but we rented for a couple of uh, months to, to put all these banners together. So we unsaw them together and we unsaw uh, reinforces on them. And we create some sort of like two big sails that were kind of like one on top of each other almost. Um, so those were the roof of, uh, of our Shibin uh, in Coventry. Um, so that's just like a few images from the install. So just to, uh, to show you. So uh, the install team uh, was amazing. So they, um, we have designed with them uh, the structure. Um, so it wasn't possible to do a full circle uh, because the gallery was, well, big enough, but still a bit tight. So we, we opted for a semicircle, um, but still you give it an idea uh, of, you know, uh, you have the idea of, uh, of the circle. And uh, on the external side, we had this like with paste of different images of, uh, of stones and and tombs and, um, and Neolithic sites, um, so kind of like looking at this uh, Irish style um, uh, walls making that doesn't use the cement or anything between between the stones. Um, so that was the external part, and then inside uh, there was the proper pub that at this point it was very like empty and wasn't really populated yet, uh, but we were starting to put the, the various elements of the ceiling. Um, and so that's a matching uh, uh, that uh, we did uh, as part of the work and uh, kind of represent uh, each uh, of the guests uh, and the performers of our Druids Ball. Um, I'm just gonna show you a quick uh, video, which is just like a drone uh, um, visit of, uh, of the space in commentary, so you can get an idea of the work fully installed. Uh, it's just two minutes long. I don't think there is sound. Oh yeah, there is sound.
Great. So you could see um, our work in the second room. And then uh, uh, the first room was Gentle Radical. Then you have uh, a boss and uh, project artworks. And the last room was cooking section. So the five collective nominated. Um, and then here I have a, just a series of still images. Um, that's the outside of the Shibin. So we set up these uh, um, kind of like empty flagpoles. So again, that was what a reference on, uh, on the flags and uh, the, um, yeah, the meaning of flags in Belfast, which is um, uh, obviously a city that has like uh, certain areas are very much uh, use flags as a demarcation of like what community they're um, part of, um, I suppose. Um, so sometimes very uh, controversial use of flags uh, as well, um, as well as uh, the, the kind of like light that the Neolithic sites often uh, um, have uh, you know in specific uh, moments of the year, for example, the winter solstice or um, summer solstice. Um, so we want to project this uh, kind of like long long lights uh, within uh, on on the outside uh, structure of the of the shibin, and uh, and the light as well. It was a sort of light dawn to dusk continuous light. So at like a um, a cycle of around uh, 35 mils. Uh, that was 35 was also the length uh, of the video. So it was kind of like every every circle was uh, was different, uh, and so it was was never that bright. It was always quite like bluish uh, or on the kind of like lighter, um, warmer tone, uh, but never stark. Uh, so you're always. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're always taking out of the pub very early in the morning or very late at night, I suppose. Um, and so then you can see the installation from the other side. So these like long uh, shadows from the poles uh, and that's the entrance of, uh, of the Shibin. You can see those, uh, you know, stone, uh, wall stone style um, uh, um, wet paste and uh, some bits of the of the canopy that was kind of like continuing outside the structure of the of the work and that's just like a, a detail of uh, of the outside structure um, and then that's inside uh, so obviously these photos are very like wide angle so it looks it's massive but it's quite intimate if you if you went in um, and uh, yeah, you can see the roof and you can see we got lots of little elements uh, um, in, uh, in the bar that was a bar that was actually functioning during the opening and also during the show actually, if you, if you were uh, brave enough to ask uh, the people working in, uh, in the room that will give you a cheeky, a cheeky pint, but not everybody knew, so. <laughs> um, and then, so we tried to design every element of, uh, of the pub. Um, so from the seats and from the wallpaper and uh, the, um, uh, the tablecloth and everything. And it was all kind of like reference to these like inventory uh, mythological characters that we created uh, for, for the show. And there was also a series of uh, beer mats that they were all, they have these like little characters explained or, you know, uh, briefly described. And, uh, and also picture of uh, us and uh, our friends attending uh, marches and rallies. And in that little corner, there was also a boxy TV and then we have some footage as well from uh, um, archival footage. So kind of like a link to previous work that we do with, uh, with Jerwood, uh, I suppose, to which we can like older reference. Um, uh, yeah, you can just see the installation from another uh, point of view. And uh, was always obviously darker inside, but just the, the picture is quite bright. Um, yeah, and that's the three channel video. Uh, that we made um, from the footage of the Druids Ball event in Belfast. And uh, yeah, I think that's the last uh, 
photo. Yeah, that's just our award uh, in December. Um, uh, yeah, uh, as and as and the babies that were new members. Well, definitely two new members uh, that were <laughs> um, were both born during the basically the same week as the opening in October. So fair play to our our two friends, uh, Sheila and Laura, <laughs> uh, to be able to do that as well as win the Turner Prize. Um, so uh, what time is it? Uh, sorry. Yeah, if you want, um, we can have what two questions. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, hope you're still all awake. <laughs> Um, we are we are thank you so much this has been incredible thank you for sharing all this um let me ask if there are any questions on the chat or if there are any questions in the room uh, comments uh no? yes I have a comment actually uh, okay gonna... go ahead Beth, uh, yeah so like for me it was quite interesting to see how like you were mentioning a lot the importance of the space itself as a place of, of gathering of all kinds of individuals. Um, and then you briefly also talked about um, how a lot of these collectives and, and artists groups, they have to move out of um, where you were in, in central Belfast, somewhere else. So um, with the pandemic and with that lack of spaces, how do you see the, the future of, of artist led communities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's a, you know, uh, it's a position that's always been very ephemeral. Um, Belfast is a place that uh, obviously has um, very positive points and that's why so many artists are based here. Uh, it's a very cheap city to live still now. Um, the rent is quite cheap. Uh, well, depends on which area you are, but like, you know, there's few areas that there's, is cheap, still affordable uh, to live. And, and the same was for, uh, for artist bases. Um, so, yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, now we are in the, posi in the moment where these, these redevelopments are, um, are happening uh, and they're very much, you know, um, uh, they're very much uh, using this like uh, this added value that arts uh, as on <laughs> on uh, um, some areas of town uh, to to brand to rebrand uh, these spaces. Uh, so it is it is a bit it is weird because we know as artists you know that you are the uh, the ones that eventually will gentrify someplace, <laughs> like you're, you're kind of, you feel that you're the cause of the problem as well, even though it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Um, there is quite yes, like you are the cause and the victim at the same time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there is quite a, you know, distance between us and uh, the council, for example, uh, that is quite slow and. Uh, in recognizing these things and recognizing the value of these things. Like they know that arts has value, but then they it's very hard for them to, to get to know the smaller artist studios and spaces that are active in the city for so long. Uh, like obviously they, they look at the more, the more like, um, um, yeah, immediate stuff, you know, the, there is a big museum in Belfast and uh, uh, big festivals and, you know, it's it's easy to see these things. Uh, but then if you're not within the arts, you might be fine art to, to know about these other uh, activities that actually has a way longer legacy than uh, most recent uh, art spaces and, yeah, um, museums. So, uh, sorry, to answer your question, uh, I don't know exactly. Some uh, space, uh, some uh, groups have been moved in west, uh, sorry, in the east of the city, uh, but again, uh, the lists are quite short, so it's all this, uh, it's easy for two artists to get short lists, but they're like one year, one year and a half, one year and a half max. So it's very easy for landlord to rent a space, uh, you know, the artists will keep it well, um, but then they will have to move again. So it's it's quite ridiculous. There is a space uh, called P Square Paragon Studios, which is um, another, you know, amazing uh, uh, space for, for artists. Uh, 
and you know a very like open-minded place where people are able to do what, what they want uh, uh, most of the time and uh, um and yet they have been moving uh, like I think three times in five years, but they have been moving literally from like this, <laughs> from like, it's like around the corner, uh, but it's just the way uh, it works now. Um, it's quite hard to find the long-term lease and, and also people that are willing to invest in that. So there is an ongoing conversation with the city council and there seems that there is now a bit more interest. And I think the uh, Turner Prize as well really helped that uh, because they suddenly realized, oh, who, who are these people? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's not just us. It's like a bunch of like 200 artists that are working in Belfast. Uh, um, so that was a good compromise and a good excuse to start, uh, uh, start having this conversation. And so we'll see if the promise that they made will actually uh, materialize. Thank you. Sofia, is there any question on the floor? Hello. <laughs> Can Hi, you hear me? Hi, <laughs> connected. Um, thank you very much. I really enjoyed your work and the fun and the humor and the politics. Um, it looks really good fun to make it. Um, I was wondering, you talk about um, the artists work all individually and also as part of a collective. Um, is there kind of an obvious sort of um, separation between the two areas of work? Or do you ever have situations where you're kind of, should this be a collective piece or should this be an individual piece? How do you go about deciding when to work with others and when to work on your own? <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. It's, it's a very, um, yeah, it's a very undefined boundary sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, and might, sometimes you might make something and then you decide to just like throw it in the, the mix. So, like it happens with the, with the Turner, especially, uh, where at some point we have to, you know, to populate this uh, pub with lots of things. They're like, oh, what, what we should put in? So uh, we use some, like, some, well, for example, there was uh, a painting of one of uh, a Ray member and uh, his friend had this painting in her house and he was like, here, can I just borrow this painting for three months? Uh, so <laughs> that was, you know, born as an individual work, uh, then now uh, it's part of the Turner Prize. So uh, we, he's in discussion with his friend trying to figure out, oh, shall we borrow it once when we need it, when we show the show again, or uh, what's, should I make a new one? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think it kind of depends from situation to situation. Um, as an individual, well, I, I'm also working in another collective <laughs> just because I love collectives, uh, but we are a duo. So I suppose it's like almost being an individual um, in that sense. Um, and yeah, there isn't really an answer. Uh, and some of us also collaborate between themselves, maybe with some project. Um, some of us uh, are working in... Um, in other like arts organizations. So there might be a project and they invite a couple of us to work on it. And so you will make a work together, but just between two or three people. Um, so uh, because the art scene in Belfast is quite small, everybody know each other. Um, it comes quite natural to collaborate or do things together when you have the opportunity to. Um, so, I don't think people are like overthinking too much about, uh, oh, shall this be just me or, uh, you know, it, it, it happens quite uh, case to case, I suppose. And, but quite uh, naturally, uh, there isn't really start, a start definition. I start the marcation, sorry. Hi, I, I have a, just a short more question. Thank you for your presentation. It was like, felt really touching because it was so grounded, like, I mean, theoretically, and but also like in everything you did. And then it seemed like you came together like mm, because of a very intense period of protests and you started working together from this period of time. <laughs> I was, I mean, I was just wondering 
in in the video also one of your uh, colleagues said that some of these banners were not art and i was just wondering if i mean will you keep working together if there are less there's always a the world is not perfect so there's always reasons to like protest or fight but it was because it was a particularly intense period of protest i wondered well if you imagine just keeping working together or is it is it is you're just going to stop and then and it's just a question between the distance or relationship between your position as an activist and an artist which makes your work so strong i mean Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it in person, but from your presentation. So I just wondered if you had a comment or I guess you talk about this amongst you. Yeah, no, no, it's it's a fair question. And and it's also, you know, uh, once you are in, in a position that uh, is slightly more privileged because you, you can say, oh, we we got this prize, uh, you know. Uh, so how how do you how do you go with that? How do you use that uh, on uh, uh, at your advantage, but also as the community you're part of um, and to benefit also others uh, um, beyond yourself. Uh, so yeah, it is a difficult, it is a difficult thing to navigate. I suppose in terms of uh, protesting and rallies, uh, uh, there is definitely be a, a less, um, uh, it has definitely been different since the decriminalization uh, because, of course, uh, uh, some stuff has been achieved. Um, but we're still, uh, you know, we're still very keen of being part uh, of, uh, of certain causes that we felt very personal. Um, so that's something that we'll be keep doing, uh, but not as an agenda of like, oh, like we have to go to protest, like if not, <laughs> they will not trust us anymore. Uh, but it's more like it happens again, quite casually, if there is something on and whoever is available will go. And uh, if we have time, we make you make stuff for it. Uh, um, for example, in this past June, um, there was uh, a, a very big, like incredibly big uh, um, rally for uh, language right and the language um, act um, in Belfast and um, and it was great I wasn't there unfortunately because I was away but a uh, few of us make um, uh, a big prop for that and we're carrying that around but that's you know it might be incorporated in a project might not but we feel that the things that we make for for protests and rally should just be make with the idea of just going there and do something for that. And then if later it, it makes sense to incorporate in a project that is within an art gallery or whatever, then happy days. Like you have, you know, you have the chance to like bring that, uh, um, uh, bring that question and that, uh, uh, that fight uh, to another audience that might never heard of it. Um, but we, we, we try to like just keep our our way to go to protest and to attend this event uh, as it was before the Turner Prize, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's difficult to navigate, I suppose, because we have like, you know, few few quest, uh, like few requests about, uh, you know, future project and things like that. Uh, and uh, and it's all, always hard to like, try to not instrumentalize, uh, you know, very important causes to your own, artistic uh, CV advantage. So we, yeah, we try as much, as much as possible to not do that. But of course we're, we're learning also on the way. Thank you so much. We're trying to <laughs> say thank you. <laughs> um, it, it would be amazing if next summer we can get some of you in person here and, and, and kind of bring you in contact with our tutors and students. Honestly, there's so much overlap uh, in, in your agenda with what we're trying to, to experiment with this summer. So 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Anna who just woke up. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> I think it's a, instead of an applause. So. <laughs> thank you. Anna, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Thank and, you. Uh, Again, congratulations. Thank you very much. And then if you ever, um, we're probably going to show the same work in Belfast next year. So I don't know if you guys organize also short trips. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, it will be great to have you over if you, if you can, if you have the capacity to do that. Yeah, we have like short programs as well abroad. So we don't have any in Ireland at the moment, but maybe who knows yeah <laughs> great no, it, okay. it, it's a really nice idea i mean uh if you are open uh for for us to come visit you i think we can make up an event uh to to do so <laughs> yeah well i can i can uh, um update you with what we're gonna do but so the work will be shown definitely in Belfast uh, in a museum called Arsene Museum next year. And it will be there for quite a long time. Like I think it was, it's not sure yet, but it should be around like five months or something. Uh, and there will be a program of event around that, which also, I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen yet. Uh, but once uh, we have that drafted uh, I can I can forward that to you and maybe you're interested in attending uh, some some please of the stuff. please let us know and and yes let's make the conversation going yeah yeah no it will be great thank you so much for your interest and um, yeah it was lovely to have you and thank you for the question I know it's so hard to have a question at the end of a long presentation <laughs> so thanks for the effort thank you. no thank you thank you thank you for the time thank you for the presentation bye bye okay chat soon <laughs> bye 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 all bye Anna. <laughs> we'll follow up um alessia with like all the the rest of the forms yeah no problem okay thanks beatrix thank bye 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 bye